Hello everyone, Matt Watson here from CarWow and I'm here with the new BMW M8 and of course I'm going to give it a jolly good reviewing and to do that I'm going to talk you through the design upgrades, classic M door mirrors, show you around the cabin, all right mate, measure its performance, that bucked off the line, test it on track, no too late, drive it on road and I don't care because I like my BMW, see how much fun it is, Hello. And of course, yeah, I'm going to poke it with a stick. I'm going to need a bigger one. Anyway, on with the video. So I'm sat on an empty racing circuit on the start finish straight with the new M8 competition. I've got my specialist timing gear up here. The car is in its sportiest settings. I'm going to launch it to see how quick it is over the standing quarter mile. Can it beat the M5? The best time I've got out of an M5 competition is 11.1 seconds, which is the same time I've got out of an AMG GT four door. Let's do it. Come on then, me old mate. That bucked off the line. <laughs> Come on, what are you gonna do? It's certainly feeling very quick, very quick. And there is a the time. There is the time. Right, mm. so it did it in 12.4 seconds. I'm lying, I'm lying. It did it in 11.2 seconds. 0.1 of a second slower than the M5 competition and AMG GT four door, but those were filmed in the UK when it was cold, it's quite hot here, and that does affect a car's performance. <laughs> it's close, isn't it? Oh, what, you wanna see the 0-60 time as well? Okay, 0-60 in 3.1 seconds. That's also impressive. Now, if you wanna see my full in-depth video review of the AMG GT four door, just click up there on the pop-out banner or follow the link in the description. Do you know what would be interesting? Doing the launch again with the car in two-wheel drive mode, like old M cars, what time would it do then? Let's find out. Well, that's hard, it's going sideways mentally. <laughs> yeah, that, that did it in 15 seconds. It's got that smells. And 0 to 60, 8.3 seconds and almost crashed into the wall, which would have been bad. Now, let's talk about this car's design upgrades over the normal 8 series. So the M8 gets a slightly shorter rear spoiler, which is a bit more kicked up. Also, you've got your M8 badging there, and this one's the competition. You've got a deeper rear bumper as well with a defined diffuser, and look at the exhaust pipes. I've got this puny stick. It's not really gonna do the job here, but they are real. However, I need something with a bit more girth. I can illustrate it with the bottle. There we go real exhaust pipes and they're very big. Down the sides, you've got some unique M alloy designs. There's some sportier side skirts as well. As standard, you get the carbon roof. It's not an option, you get it when you buy the car. There are of course, classic M door mirrors and M side air vents. There's bulging wheel arches. You've got a deeper front bumper. You've got twin slats in the kidney grille as well. It just looks a little bit meaner than the normal M850i, doesn't it? What do you think of it? Click on the pop-out banner in the top right-hand corner of the screen to vote whether you think this looks cooler than the standard car. If you're more of a poseur and you want to have the wind in your hair, then there is this convertible version of the M8. As you can see, doing its thing with the roof. It is more expensive though, 130 grand instead of 123,000 pounds. Now, if you're thinking about buying a new car or you know someone who is, head over to carwire.co.uk to see how much you can save from our trusted dealers. I'm actually gonna take this car for a drive later on, but let's continue with the video. Now, I wanna show you this. BMW has a closed room with the new M8 Grand Coupe. It's secret. Now, journalists are allowed in, but we're not allowed to have cameras in here, but I'm gonna just kind of ignore that and chance it. Come on, quick, 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 quick. So here, here's the car here. Look, normal M8, but it's longer, obviously, and you've got rear doors. So let's see if we can have a look inside before we get rumbled. Let's have a look. So, here we go, inside it. Excuse me, what are you doing? Okay, Stop can we just film it a little Stop bit? Stop filming. Stop, you know, you're no, not allowed to do the Come on, it's just no, for the no, video no, of the M8. The M8 has some upgrades here on the inside. So you get an M-specific gear selector, and it has three settings for the ferocity of the gear shifts. 
These buttons here are slightly different as well, and you get a red starter button. Yes, there's also some M specific dials on the digital driver's display. You get an M sport steering wheel with some M stitching and badging. There's common fiber on the center console. You also have an M8 badge here and on the sills and up here on the seat and that illuminates in the dark. Looks really cool. You obviously get M sport seats as well, which are more body hugging than the ones in the M850i. Plus, if you have the competition version, you can get two-tone seats if you want it to look like you spilt chicken korma. The competition also gets Alcantara headlining, which is nice to stroke. As with the normal 8 Series Coupe, it's still pretty crap in the back. The boot is more spacious though. Ta-da! So you can fit some stuff in there, so long as it fits through this gap, which is actually quite narrow, which does make it a little bit awkward to pack. And that brings me on to five annoying things about the M8. You have to pay extra for automatic cruise control with auto steer, which is a bit of a rip-off considering this car's price and the fact it comes as standard on a Toyota Corolla. In fact, if you want to see my full in-depth video review of the Toyota... I'm only joking. If you want to see my full in-depth video review of the Audi RS7, click on the pop-out banner up there. Having had an M850i as a daily driver, I fell in love with its crystal gear selector, but you can't get it at all on the M8, which it's a shame. If you want to go topless in the M8, the bad news is that the convertible adds over 100 kilos to the car's weight, which isn't ideal. Also, for some reason, the gesture control for the infotainment system doesn't operate in the convertible. The M8 costs £25,000 more than the M850i, which is about the same price as a 1 Series. Yes, you do get a lot of upgrades, but really, out there on the road, do you need them? Will you benefit? I'm not sure that you will. If you've got the normal M8, you have to pay extra if you want the M Sports exhaust. Though it does come as standard on this competition version. That said, it's not as loud as it could be due to new and annoying European noise regulations. So... It's all right, but it could have been so much better. My advice to you is get an aftermarket system immediately. It's not all negative though. Here's five good things about this car. There's some special M buttons here, M1 and M2, and you can configure them for the engine response, the chassis, the steering, the four-wheel drive system, and the brake. You can actually alter the responsiveness of the brake. Though, just to be clear, when you give it full beans on the brake, you do get maximum braking no matter what mode you're in. The M8 has some serious chassis upgrades over the M850i. So let's start at the front. You have stiffer springs, high performance dampers, the car so sits lower to the ground, and the stiffer anti-roll bars as well. Now we move on to this plaque here, which adds bracing to the front subframe. You have that on the M5, but here on the M8, they've actually extended it out to the sills to provide even stiffer strengthening. Another thing to note is this, the oil pan is made out of metal. On the M850i, it's plastic. This helps cool the oil better. Moving to the rear, we have some more chassis bracing you don't get on the M850i, and once again, improved suspension and stiffer arms for the suspension as well. That all does help with the handling. We've also got an M differential, which is high performance than the differential you get on the M850i, and it's made out of aluminium, which cools it better than the steel version you get on the standard car. Then there's the brakes. So they're improved in terms of the pistons, the calipers, and also the brake pads and the discs over the normal M850i, but you can also get carbon ceramics, which you can't on the standard car. Finally though, the track at the rear is slightly wider, which helps improve the stability. This car may be four wheel drive, but you can put it into two wheel drive if you want to be a little bit naughty. Hello, hello, how are you doing? You all right? Yeah, it's fun this. The competition version of the M8 gets some stiffer engine mounts, more camber on the front wheels for improved lateral grip, and a track mode for the infotainment system, which basically turns it off and the stereo so you're not distracted for maximum focus on lap times. The M8 has a 4.4 litre twin turbo V8, which is similar to that in the M850i, but completely reworked. So new turbos, new exhaust system, new pistons, pretty much new everything. As a result, it puts out 600 horsepower in the normal car and 625 horsepower in the competition. Torque is 750 newton meters, and it drives all four wheels via an eight-speed torque converter automatic gearbox. All right then, let's kick off the driving section by driving the M8 on track because it's an M car. <laughs> Makes sense, doesn't it? Now what I'm gonna do is press this button to put it into M2 mode 
and I've got the car set up in its sportiest setting. DSC is off, but I've got four-wheel drive on rather than four-wheel drive sport because four-wheel drive sport is a bit more rear biased. It's good for making a tail wag, a bit of a laugh, but you'll be faster in four-wheel drive mode. I am changing the gears myself and it's on maximum attack. And oh my God, this thing pulls ass up the straight, really does. It's got these brakes, it's a tight turn, this one, it's a hairpin. This is a heavy car, two tons. It does a good job on the brakes and it just grips, stays flat. There's no hiding its mass. It, it doesn't feel as playful or as race car-y as an M4 competition, but it's good. It's sharper, I think, than the M5, definitely. That lower center of gravity helps it, but so does the extra bracing. Whoa! <laughs> Let's be honest though, not many people will be taking their M8s on track, not like they would do in their M4s, but you can do it if you want it to. Let's head out onto the road now and see what it's like there, because that's what really matters, isn't it? So here we are then, out on the road in the M8, and the fact you've got less runoff and the corners are tighter, it amplifies this car's performance. It feels even quicker out here. You don't notice the weight quite so much either because you're going a bit slower, but you notice the performance more. So when you put your foot down, it's like, oh my God, off we go again. This car does feel noticeably more aggressive, sharper, more fun than the M850, which I had for three months. I know that car really well. I've got all the settings in sport, so for most things it's mid-table, like the throttle response, but obviously the suspension is in its sportier settings. Yes, this definitely performs as you want an M car to out on the road. All right, it's time for the sensible and slightly boring bit, but bear with me because if you're buying one of these cars, you are going to end up driving it on normal town roads. I'm just going to put the gearbox into less aggressive mode and heck, automatic drive. Don't have to change gears myself. I've got everything else in comfort, apart from the engine, which I'm not gonna put in efficient because why the f would you do that in an M car? Not gonna do it. But the suspension is in comfort, that's the main thing. And I'm just going over a pretty nasty bit of road here. This does feel stiffer than the M850i. Not quite as comfy, but it's not a backbreaker. This is awful, this bit here. Ooh, oh. And it dealt with it fine, yes. You can live with this driving around town every day, no problem at all, which is what you want, yet again, from your M car. Now, there's only one last place to test it, but I'm gonna jump into a different one for that. You know what? When you've got everything dialed back into comfort mode, this M8 is a really comfy cruiser. It's especially nice in convertible format when the sun's shining, you just have the roof down, not too much wind buffeting. Yeah, it's lovely, relaxing. But if you suddenly need to get a move on, you floor this thing and it just takes off. Yeah, I better slow down. <laughs> now I can put all the driver's aids on if I want, blah, 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 and just go no handed. And then just kind of adjust my cap, make sure I don't look too much like a BMW d But I guess I do. And I don't care, because I like my BMW. It's awesome. Yeah, hold up. Yeah, shouldn't do that. Yeah, don't copy me. Disclaimer, don't copy, it's bad. Always keep your hands on the wheel, even if you have the clever cruise control. Or maybe just rest your knee there and it does the same thing. Ah. So then, what's my final verdict on the new M8? Is it worth the extra cash over the M850i? Well, I'll tell you, it's an awesome bit of kit. And yes, it is worth the extra money if you want the Ultima M car. If you don't though, then no, it's not. It's as simple as that. This was fun for me though. That's what it's all about. Not you guys, no, only joking. This is all done for you. This is Saturday. I should be at home. Poor me, eh? Driving around Portimao track in an M8. Bet your heart bleeds. <laughs>